maybe a bit soggy, but that certainly hasn't deterred this fan base. A great crowd on hand to battle the raindrops in Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here between the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. The first game's out of the way. Time to buckle down for the long season ahead, and we're off in week two. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled it to 15. Let's go now. Willis going to throw it right away. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. That's a pickup of 11 and a first down on their first offensive play. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. The Titans had 0-1 on the year following the loss in the opener. And listen, they knew last week they were in for a tough fight on the road. But now here's the home opener and a chance to get things right. And I like the way that you presented that because the bottom line is they didn't come out of that loss discouraged. They just came home and said, hey, if we do what we're supposed to do, protect our home turf, we'll be just fine. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, this defense for the Colts, terrific last week in the season opening victory. And the way they did it was by getting after the quarterback. Sacked him seven times in that game. Came from all angles, created a lot of illusions, and especially just beat them man for man. That's the kind of defense that really frustrates an opponent. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them, and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try and pass downfield that fell incomplete. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. A pretty good-looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down jubilation, aren't you? And now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Again, it's Taylor. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that game. Now this time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. Throwing over, and it's Taylor on the out route that completes it. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard. Well, oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. And the Titans are going to take possession of the football. A first down carry for Henry. And he is 
swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. It's rare that a man his size can at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy? Back now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Colts pick it up. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And they are going to score on the fumble return. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And he's all the way up across the 40 and down at the 42. Great return. Well, he gave up the first touchdown of the game, but how about the response? Big time return. Yeah. Now it's their chance to try and put points on the board. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. And they run with Henry on first down, but nothing much materializing as he'll get forward only for about a yard. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Now Willis on third down. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Inside handoff, Henry. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. If you start assessing what went wrong last week, Charles, and their loss, had nothing to do with the ground game. They ran it well. And you also have to say to yourself as a team, don't go away from what worked. That's not the reason the game was lost. Running the football over time when you do it consistently usually translates into wins. And they're hoping to do it consistently here. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Isaiah Rogers. And the Colts are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. That, Charles, the first interception he's thrown here in year number two. And I know it's just the first one, but didn't it feel like what we saw from him last year where he was plagued by this type of a play? And they thought that, you know, over the offseason, going into a second season, some of that would go away. Thus far, still looks a lot like his rookie year. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, Run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive. Come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. And incomplete on the deep ball. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Five yards, now it's third and five. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him, Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Purdy looking to throw. 
Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And they'll bring him down one yard shy after a pickup of four. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. Well, Charles, the NFL record is 66 yards. That was five shy of that. But only a handful of guys have ever connected from 61 or deeper, and he can add his name to the list. Yeah, more and more guys are trying it. That doesn't mean the success rate has gone up. That is a long kick. Guaranteed, when he turns on his phone after the game, a ton of congratulatory texts will be awaiting him. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. It'll only be a loss of a couple, but the pressure gets home on first down. At the 23, it's second and 12. Another try after the first down sack. Willis complete. It's Henry. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm, trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. Rodgers to return it. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra injury. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice. But at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the 44, Purdy looking deep downfield. He's got a man complete. Touchdown. Good throw there, and I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but he looks a lot more comfortable in his second season. You can tell he put the work in in the offseason, and what I mean by that is understanding the playbook, not just the plays and how to execute them, but how to do it against a variety of defenses, also understands his team better, what they can and cannot do. You can see the confidence rising in him as he plays. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And I believe the Colts have recovered. Yes, they have. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers and quickly. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Flushed out. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Josh Sweat rushing in and bringing him down to the ground. There's a lot of discussion in the offseason about him having a big year and getting to the quarterback. They held him without a sack in week one, but how about here? Finally gets his first one of the season. In the offseason, said he changed his diet. Leaner feels so good this year. Excited to see what type of a season he can have. On second and goal, Purdy. 
Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Amani Hooker. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about it. he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positive Let's moving forward. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Second down, Willis looks to throw here. This will go to Henry out wide. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. First down, Titans gain of 12. On first down, Willis. They set up the screen for Henry. Now this will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. There we go, From the 22, Willis. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. And this offense continues to shoot themselves in the foot. And here, another sack. All game long, we've seen missed assignments, which have led to turnovers, sacks. This group has not played well at all here in the first half. Going deep downfield for Ross. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. First and 10, Willis. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Multiple players getting home for the one-yard sack. And he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And a short gain here, down to the 22. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll run here with Haskins. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. Trying to punch it in with Henry. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This Colts D up to the challenge so far, but they need another stop here on third and goal. Yeah. 
And he will take this one in for a Titans touchdown. Malik Willis, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Titans go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And it's 17 7. So the lead back down to 10 as things get a little more interesting, and the kick is away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble and bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And with a 17-7 lead, maybe they're just looking to get into the locker room. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He's got a man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. What a play that turns out to be. 36 yards. Big plays are starting to become the trend here in this first half. And everything that they've tried has worked. And there's another example right there. They go play action here, Purdy. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. So right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. He's gonna let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Alec Pierce in the final seconds of the first half. And the Colts will extend their lead here just before halftime. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half as the kick is away. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. Last play of the half. Here's Willis. Going deep downfield for Ross. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we come to halftime here with the visiting Colts taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. Now they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. To the 43, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through, 
No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. A well, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Caleb Farley. And the Titans are going to take possession of the football. And pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Second down throw coming by Willis. Escaping the press. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. More than one defender there, and that's a loss of five on the sack. And you get the feeling, Charles, yeah, he's got the two sacks now, but he may get more here. We still got a quarter and then some to go. And the way that he is playing this game, it reminds me of one of the best golfers in the world who can use every club in the bag and make a great shot. That's what he's doing with his pass rush moves right now, showing a little bit of everything. They have no way of stopping it. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Trucks over him. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. A tough run gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. Second down, they go again with Henry. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. 41 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. And they'll try again here first and goal after the full three, start. Three. Check, check it. After the penalty, it's Henry. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out, and the Colts pick it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, give some credit to the defense. They forced the big play, knocked the ball free from him, but that's a cardinal sin by the quarterback. Know where you are on the field, and he just gave up at a minimum three points. And instead of getting down, takes the contact. The turnover ensues. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside, and so many times defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. 
And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. That's exactly what you're looking for at the inside linebacker spot. Versatility. He can drop into coverage, or as he did on that last play, use his speed to get to the perimeter and knock the ball carrier for a loss. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Now here's Ross. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Titans will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're gonna try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand They've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Well, a good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Here's Willis. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. The 20. Touchdown, Titans! There you go, Charles. His first touchdown pass of the new season. And he had a strong rookie year. So much more expected of him this one, as you might imagine. He threw that one with confidence and assuredness. And I noticed that the celebration a little bit more subdued than his first touchdown pass last year as a rookie. Yeah, he certainly is acting like he's done it before. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. This now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Play action. Now Purdy. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of momentum. The other side is starting the game. He finds Pierce. It's complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. This offense really looking polished these first couple of weeks. Here's first and 10. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. Now a second down and six. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And only a couple there as he'll take this up to the 47. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 
On third down, here's Taylor. And some room to maneuver. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 91 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point in the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven, reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. A 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Jonathan Taylor, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Colts are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover. They want to try and put points on the board. To the air on first down, here's Willis. Going deep downfield for Ross. And got his man complete. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Willis looking to throw on first down. He finds the speedster Ross, that's complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Malik Willis. His third touchdown of the season, all coming in this game. And the Titans have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point up and good by Bullock. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They'll give him four yards there, third and seven now. 
So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. He's got his man. It's Pierce. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Purdy now to throw off the play action. And he'll find Pittman. Down the left sideline. Touchdown, Colts. Michael Pittman, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Colts are on their way to a 2-0 start. Looking like they're well on their way to a 2-0 start. All smiles right now on that sideline, isn't it? As well there should be. It's hard to win a game in the NFL. We hear it all the time. We know that it's difficult. But guess who's smiling? But inside is thinking 24-hour rule because we're going to have to play again next week. Boss man. Oh, without a doubt. The head coach, <laughs> he wants them to feel good, but at the same time, find a way to keep improving. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally... I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. I'll now. tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and 10. And nowhere to run for Willis. He goes down. Stephon Gilmore dials the corner blitz and earns the sack. A lot of ground to cover. Second and 22. Another try after the first down sack. Willis. Henry's got it. Out on the left side. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Third down, the Colts beefing up the secondary. Six defensive backs in the game. Here's Willis, third and long. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Boy, so another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now... His head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him. And it's intercepted at the goal line. It's Roger McCreary with the pick. And the Titans are going to take possession here at their own 33. Well, their defense got him the football with an interception. They trot out their Charles in the first play. They give the football right back. <laughs> Brand, I almost expect you coming like an auctioneer. We've got two, we got two. Do I hear three? Remember, it was two in a row. Would we hit three in a row? Because these offenses, they got to be a little bit more careful as they go forward. These defenders, they're locked in and really focused. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Willis will look to throw it. And that falls to the ground incomplete. 
A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. And he'll get this underneath to Henry. And the tackle going to be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. One final try for Willis. Right side complete. That's Woods. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. But what a performance. All those points put on the board. And, Charles, it wasn't just by the offense. The defense put some points on the board as well. They were solid today. Yeah, it was a complete effort to secure the win. And both sides of the ball made big plays. But how demoralizing is it when the opposing defense can take one all the way back against you? And that was the case here. That really sparked them to victory. So for the Colts, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one 